All right, Alexander, let's talk about the, uh, the JCPOA, or what was the JCPOA. Let's talk about Iran, and let's talk about Saudi Arabia, and what was supposed to be a Biden visit to, uh, to Saudi Arabia, so he could effectively grovel at, uh, at the feet of MBS so that they can get uh, oil production ramped up as, uh, as the U.S. heads into midterms in about five, six months from now. And uh, once again... It's not looking good for, for the Biden White House in, uh, in the Middle East, neither with Saudi Arabia or with Iran, of which MBS despises the Biden White House. Iran obviously despises the Biden White House. And uh, he, he's completely boxed himself in. What, yes. what, what's going on here? It, 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 it takes a particular genius, actually, <laughs> if I can put it, or reverse genius, to be able to be on bad terms with both the Iranians and the Saudis at one and the same time. Given that these two countries are, are rivals and enemies and, you know, detest each other, you would have thought that if you were friends with one, <laughs> you would, or you know, enemies with one, you'd be friends with the other. Well, Biden has managed the improbable feat of managing to be on bad terms with both now, he came into the presidency saying that he would revive the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action, which was Barack Obama's deal with um, Iran, whereby the Iranians gave up enriching uranium in return for sanctions relief. And um, Donald Trump wasn't happy with that. He thought that was a bad deal, and he scrapped the JCPOA. Biden said that he would revive it. And, of course, he then entered into these unending negotiations with the Iranians about reviving the JCPOA. Except, of course, he never did, because he, he never actually agreed to reverse uh, Trump's sanctions. He, he refused to change Trump's designation of the Iranian Revolutionary Guard Corps as a terrorist organization. Now, I know a lot of people think that Trump was right to designate the Iranian Revolutionary Guard Corps as a terrorist organization, but the Iranians made it clear that that is an absolutely red line for them. That designation has to be lifted if the JCPOA is going to be revived. Biden said that he would lift it when he was candidate Biden and renegotiate the JCPOA or re go back into the JCPOA. He's refused to lift it as president. And of course, he hasn't got the JCPOA. And after, well, well over a year now of negotiations, which are going nowhere, we have nowhere close to seeing the JCPOA revived. The Iranians have lost patience. They've now apparently enriched uranium up to a level of 60%, and they're holding ever bigger stocks of that. And the rumour is that they're going to increase enrich enrichment, uranium enrichment even more, and um, that they're setting up a whole underground facility of centrifuges to accelerate enrichment, and that's just going to put them well within reach of developing a nuclear bomb. Whether they want to or whether they don't, that's another matter. But anyway, that's what, that's what the Iranians are doing. The Israelis, meantime, are becoming increasingly alarmed. They're conducting air exercises, you know, big you know, air, air maneuvers to prepare for bombing raids on Iran. And the US, the US doesn't seem to be able to do anything to restrain or slow that process down. So, that side of the thing has been completely mismanaged. So but the, the Saudis have not been pleased either. The Saudis are still very angry because of Biden's criticism, blaming of MBS over the Khashoggi affair. The Saudis are still furious because of uh, US Biden's attempt to revive the JCPOA. And they're also very, very angry by the moves that um, Biden has made to try to pull the rug under the, under the Saudis' feet over Yemen. So the Saudis are angry with uh, Biden. The Iranians are angry with Biden. The Iranians are pressing ahead with nuclear enrichment. The Saudis have now again postponed Biden's visit. I suspect what they were afraid of was that Biden would make criticisms of Putin and of Russia 
And MBS has a good relationship with Putin, which he doesn't want to spoil. So they've told Biden to postpone the visit. They're refusing the pressure to increase production to any significant degree. There were some headlines a few days ago that they would increase production. But if you drill into the figures, that simply isn't correct. They're simply bringing forward by a few weeks increases in production that had already been penciled in. So the Saudis are refusing to do what Biden wants. The Iranians are now busy enriching uranium. We have a crisis in the Gulf, in the Middle East, brewing, which will increase oil prices even more, even at the same time as because of the crisis over Ukraine. The Biden administration's priority surely ought to be to pacify the situation in the Gulf in order to bring oil prices down. If we have Israeli air attacks on Iran, well, you know, we're not looking at $120 oil, we're looking at $220 oil, and that will be in the run-up to the midterms. So what happens to the Democrats at that point, I don't even want to try and imagine. Yeah, uh, wasn't Biden the one that was supposed to uh, fix the, the JCPOA after Trump? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, of course he was. He was the man who was, you know, the adults in the room. He was going to bring back professional, well-organized, well-structured diplomacy. He was going to repair all of Trump's mistakes. He was going to, you know, put to bed all the things that Trump did, which had caused all this confusion. So far, all he's managed is to bring the U.S. back into the Paris Climate Change Agreement. Everything else is going wrong and going wrong at an accelerating speed. All right, uh, we will uh, leave it there, the Duran.locals.com, everybody, and go to the Duran shop, get 10% off, use the code GOODDAY. Take care.